to do a quick demo. So um, we have a folder here called exp load. I'm sorry, I needed a cool name. And um, what we're going to do is we are going to, I guess it's a new rendition on an old problem, which is the um, DLL or binary planting preloading search order vulnerabilities in some applications. So what happens is there's an application in a folder and when you launch that application it looks inside of the folder for certain resources to load which in some cases it shouldn't be looking in those folders like um you know if if um if there's a, a program launched from system 32 but it's actually looking in a user's folder um that's bad and so what we're what we're going to demonstrate here is um a new uh, a new rendition so if we if we look at works folders or work folders um let me just select that and then go to open location there we go so this uh, windows system 32 folder um if i go to new folder you can see that there's a um you need administrative privileges because they've got the shield there so if this if this work folders has a a search order issue um I wouldn't be able to put a file into Windows System 32 without elevated privileges. But this, uh, this what's interesting is is that you can actually call works folder.exe from a user controlled folder, and then you're you're bringing the preloading problem into an area which you can control. I hope that makes sense. So um, if we load up Propmon, or if I load up Propmon, and then we have um, so. Typical for uh, finding these types of bugs, name not found, and then a location. So XP load, uh, explode. Um, so if we launch work folders as is, you'll see that um, it searches for. Sorry, I'm just about to sneeze, but maybe I'm not. Uh, so it's searching for work folders um, in itself, it's not there, and then it goes to system32 and then it finds it. Uh, but then it comes back to this folder and then it searches for control.exe, doesn't find it, probably goes to system32 and finds it. Right. So you can tell what we're going to do. We're going to put a version of, uh, we're going to put our file in there called control.exe, which by name is called control.exe, but what it executes is probably not going to be the same. It absolutely isn't going to be the same. It's going to be my cobalt strike. Um, so if we go to pairs, which is my payloads folder, which has nothing to do with the structure, it's just a place where I put it, 32-bit payload, um, and then let's paste that into here, and then let's give it the name that it's asking for, control.exe. So um, I guess that the that there are problems around integrity checks um, as well, but that's maybe something else. So the next time that we load this, we should get a cobalt strike beacon. Um, let's try um so yeah we can tell that our version of controllers ran it's looking for some stuff which has got nothing to do with this but uh you know maybe you could play with that too and then if we go back over here we can see that we've got our uh, our cobalt strike beacon um let's do uh ms paint because calc is for noobs i'm joking uh, uh, and then at some point Microsoft Paint will launch in here. I'm not quite sure how how slow uh, how slow that is, but um, so that's that's it. Um, there are a few other programs that I've seen doing this. Uh, there's um, where is it? Let's see if we can show you a few while we're waiting for Paint. If we go into Program Files, so we're outside of System32, and we go into Program Files, we go in Explorer, and we do IE Diag CMD. So check this out. So you can't call this um, straight from the, you know, you have to use double quote, or you have to, uh, uh, <laughs> you, oh nice, that's pretty good, one hand. Um, uh, let's get rid of that, don't say, cheers. Um, so we can we can call uh, workfolders.exe straight from, from here uh, because it's in system32 and that's like a registered path, but program files, uh, uh, you might want to uh, put the full path, otherwise it might not work. So if we trash all of this, oh, <laughs> it must be, uh, exclude uh, before. So, so if we launch this uh, IE diag cmd.exe, uh, we should see it's looking for ipconfig root.exe, 
uh, it'll look for make cab and it'll look for one more. So root.exe doesn't execute. Oh, I didn't get it to execute. ipconfig does, make cab does. And I think, I think there's one in Steam that I saw. Don't have a great deal on this box. It's supposed to be for video gaming. And uh, if my accountant asks, password cracking. Um, oh yeah, NetSH, that's the other one. That one didn't fire though. So we go to, um, where do we want to be? Steam, 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 Steam. Or maybe it's x86. Uh, oh, do you know what? I don't even know where Steam is. Terrible. Somebody's probably screaming at the computer. There we go. And uh, let's have a look. So there's quite a lot of executables on, on the computer, but what I'd be interested in is which ones are um, owned or signed by Microsoft or which ones are trusted binaries, uh, which ones run in elevated states, um, you know, what are the top 10 um, uh, or top 20 or top 50 uh, applications that might be vulnerable to this. Um, I saw some really interesting stuff with Bitdefender, but I'm going to have to spend a little bit more time finessing my payloads to uh, work around them. It's not to say that I can, it's just that I was using quite generic uh, Cobalt Strike uh, payloads uh, with no um, no real conviction. And this is still quite fresh, so I'm kind of like, you know, um, getting ahead of myself. I think that Steam Client will also do it as well. We go and just drag that in here. We might see Steam Client do it. Here we go. That was it. It was the SDL2.dll. So if you, if you position the SDL2, actually, let's do it while we're here. Uh, let's grab a, one of these. And then let's paste that in here. And then let's call it capital SDL 2.dll. And let's run that again. And then it fails to load, which, you know, maybe from an exploit perspective, the user might be like, eh, okay, didn't work. And then we go back to Robot Strike, we've got another one, streaming client.exe. Nice. Nice. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a few more, but uh, ultimately, regardless of which ones do do it, it's quite interesting because um, I don't necessarily think that the folder protections are, um, are considered a control, but they have been a control because you haven't been able to write into these folders. But but you remove that um, that as an obstacle by dragging these into a folder that you control and then allowing the sort of search order to take place in, in a user controlled or a, a untrusted slash least privileged site. Um, and that's it. So thanks.